there. Welcome to tutorial two on the bubble sort algorithm um, and in particular how this arises in the Edexcel decision one maths A level module but the work we talk about is applicable to most other decision maths A level modules. A reminder as always for any other help with your mathematical studies GCSE or A level see um, my YouTube channel Hegarty Maths or uh, MrHegartyMaths.com Okay, let's take a look at what Edexcel asks us to learn about in regards to the bubble sort algorithm. Here's the Edexcel specification to do with algorithms. We've already learnt what algorithms are and how to use and implement them by flowcharts and text. That was tutorial one. But now we're going to learn about the bubble sort algorithm. Okay, and we'll do bin packing, quick sort, and binary in future tutorials. But today we'll just focus on bubble sort. And just do bear in mind, it tells us, Edexcel says, we're not required to know anything about the order of an algorithm. So in particular, in this case, we don't need to know about the order of the bubble sort algorithm. OK, let's have a think about what the bubble sort algorithm is all about. OK, the bubble sort algorithm puts items into a desired order for us. OK, and here are three typical things we might want to do. We might want to put these numbers in ascending order, descending order, or letters in alphabetical order. So these are three of the problems we can solve using the bubble sort algorithm. Now, where does it get its name? It gets its name because at the end of each stage of the algorithm, um, the way the, the numbers work are kind of like the way bubbles work, fizzing their way to the top of um, a glass. For example, if we're trying to arrange in ascending order with the smallest first, after each stage of the algorithm, the biggest number gets pushed to the back. And then the next stage, the next biggest number gets pushed to the back. So it's kind of like bubbles making their way to uh, the back of um, this particular list of numbers. So it's kind of like the way bubbles work. Now, an important thing to talk about next is the actual algorithm. So I will write, show you the actual algorithm there. This is something you should copy down. Before I go through the algorithm, a key thing to say is, say this question here is asked, sort these numbers into ascending order. In the exam, obviously, you know how to put them in order just by looking at them but that will get you no marks. You must apply the algorithm step by step to get your marks. Now, you might ask, why do that when I can put it in order? The bubble sort algorithm is the way you'd program a computer, for example, to put numbers in order, okay? So it's important you understand how it works because you might want to program a computer to put thousands of items of data in order. Now, in an exam, you can't show off your knowledge of thousands of items of data. It would take too long. So the list is small. Nevertheless, you have to show you understand each step of the process. Now, this is how the process goes. If you've got one number in your list, you stop. You don't do anything. It's in order because it's one number. If not, you make what's called one pass along the list. In this pass, you compare each item with the one beside. So here you would compare these two and you make a swap if you need. Having done that, this is still the first pass, you compare these two and swap if you need. And you do the same thing, you continue comparing all of these until you get to the end and that's called a pass. Now, if during that pass no, no swaps occur, you stop because your list must be in order. Otherwise, you then ignore the last item, which has been pushed to the back, which is either the smallest or the largest, and you go back to step one. Okay, uh, and you there's obviously more than uh, one number in your list, um, so you then go on to step two and you make another pass through the list. Right, it's time to actually do an example to see how this works. So here we go. Here's an example um, of a typical question. We are asked to sort these numbers 7, 5, 2, 4, 10, 1, 6, 3 into ascending order. First thing you do is write your numbers down like that nice and clearly. And we're going to make various pass, passes through this list uh, using the bubble sort. Okay, the first thing uh, you do is you compare the first and second items and you make a swap if necessary. So 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this data just to make it easy for me. Okay, and I'm going to use this to do my swaps. Now, compare the first and second. If you want it in ascending order, you want, remember, smallest to largest. Okay, so you are you going to make a swap? Well, yes, you are, because 5 is smaller than 7, so you swap. Then you're going to compare these two. Do you need to swap? Yes, you do, because 2 is smaller than 7. Then these two, you need to swap, because 4 is smaller than 7. These two don't need to swap. Then you compare these two, need to swap, because 1 is smaller. Then these two, because 6 is smaller. And then these two, because 3 is smaller. Okay, and now the biggest item has been pushed to the back of the list. And you don't need to compare that anymore. You know the biggest one's at the back of the list. And what you do is you do your same, uh, you do another pass through the list, uh, swapping where necessary. So we'll just copy it again, bring it down here, and we'll make a pass through the list. Compare these two, swap if necessary, need to swap. Compare these two, yes, they need swapping. These two, no, five smaller than seven. Compare these two, one is smaller than seven, so need swapping. Compare these, six is smaller than seven, so need swapping. <clears throat> and compare these, three is smaller than seven, so need swapping. And as before, seven, the next biggest number, has been pushed to the back of your list. You don't need to compare with the ten anymore because you know the ten's at the back. It was pushed to the back. Okay, let's go again. Let's do another pass. Um, compare the first two, don't need to swap, two smaller. Compare these two, no need to swap, four smaller. Compare these two, do need to make a swap because one is smaller. Compare these two, no need to swap, five smaller. And compare these two, do need to swap because three is smaller. And again, um, the next biggest number has been brought to the back of that list. So six, seven, and 10 are the biggest numbers. Okay, let's go again for another uh, round of this. Bring these numbers down here and go through another round of the algorithm. Do these need swapping? No, two smaller. Do these? No, a yes, because one is smaller. Do these? No, four smaller. And do these? Yes, three is smaller. So the next biggest item, which is a five, has gone to the back. Okay, we'll do this again. Okay, bring this here. Do these need swapping? Well, yes, one is smaller. Do these? No, two is smaller. Do these? Yes, three is smaller. And the next biggest number has gone to the back. And now they're in order. But you don't know that, and your computer or algorithm working your computer doesn't know that until it's gone through a pass with no swaps. So it has to do a check pass, and it compares these two and these two, and no swaps needed, so it knows it's in order. And that is an application of the bubble sort. Now, it's all very well, me doing it here on a computer, moving numbers around, etc. How are you going to write this in the exam? I'll do the exact same question now, and I'll show you how I'd write it, because you can't just copy and paste data. And I'll do two more examples where I'll show you how you'd write it in the exam using slightly different questions. Okay, So here we go. Let's do the exact same question again. We're sorting these numbers in ascending. So remember, that means smallest to biggest. Okay, And this is how I'd write it or think about it in the exam. I'd write my original numbers down, nice and clearly. Then I'd do a pass, but I can do it quickly. Do these need swapping? Yes. Five has to come first. And think of the seven there. Seven and two, they need swapping. Two goes there, seven goes here. Do these need swapping? Yes. Four must go there, and a seven would be there. Then compare seven and ten. Doesn't need swapping, so write your seven down. Then compare ten and one. Well, they need swapping. One must go there. Think of the 10 as here. Compare 10 and 6. Well, that needs swapping. 6 goes there. Think of 10 and 3. They need swapping. 3 goes there and 10 goes there. Your biggest has gone to the back again. 
Okay, same thing. Compare these. Needs a swap. Two there, think of the five there. Compare five and four, need to swap. Four there, think of five there. Five and seven, don't need to swap. Think of seven and one, okay? Needs a swap, one there, and think of your seven here. Compare seven and six, needs a swap. Six there, think of your seven here. Seven and three, needs a swap. Three there, and seven, your next biggest number has been pushed to the end. Okay, let's go through another pass. Two and four, don't need a swap, write down your two. Four and five, don't need a swap, write down your four. Compare five and one, need a swap, one there, think of five there. Five and six, no need to swap, write down your five, think of six. Six and three, need a swap, three there, six there, and your next biggest number has gone to the back. Okay, another pass. Two and four, no need to swap. Compare four and one, need to swap, one there, four there, sorry, not four there, and think of the four there. Then you say four against five, no need to swap, so write down your four, think of your five, compare three and five, need to swap, three there, and your next biggest number, five, has gone there. Okay, uh, next pass, one and, uh, compare two and one, need to swap, write your one there. Two and four, two's in the right place, write it down. Four and three, well no, three needs to go ahead, and four will go there. And you know um, not to compare with the rest because they're already in order and your next biggest number has come to the back. And now you have to go through a whole pass here for the computer to check there's been no swaps and then you know that the numbers are indeed in order as required. And you're done. That's how I would write it in the exam. With a bit of practice, this comes very easy to you. Okay, let's try another example. This time, we're gonna put the same numbers in descending order. That means I want the biggest at the front and I wanna go down to the smallest. So we just have to think in our comparisons what we're doing here. Now, so I want biggest first. Compare seven and five, seven's in the right place. Think of five here. Compare five and two, five's in the right place. Okay, think of two here. Compare four and two. Well, I want the four first because it's bigger. So compare, think of the two here, two and 10. I'm gonna want the 10 first because it's bigger. Think of two here. Compare two and one, two is bigger than one, so it's in the right place. Com think of the one here, one and six. Well, six is bigger. And think of the one here, one and three, three is bigger, so the one goes to the back. This time, the smallest number ends up getting pushed to the back when we're doing descending order. And let's go through the paths again. Seven and five, right order. Five and four, right order. Four and 10, well no, 10 is bigger, so it goes first, think of the four here. Four and two, well, in the right order. Two and six, well the six needs to go here. Two and three, the three needs to go here. And the two, the next smallest, is pushed to the back. Let's go again. Seven and five, seven in the right place. Five and 10, put the 10 here, think of the five here. Five and four, in the right place. Four and six, no, the six needs to be pushed forward. And the four, think here. Four and three, that's in the right order. So the four and, uh, and the three are in the right order and the next one has been at the back. Then we go through these again. 10 with seven needs a swap. Uh, seven against five in the right place. Six against five. Six needs to come forward, and five here, compare it with the four, no need to swap. So the next small, uh, smallest, which is a four, has been pushed to the back. And let's do it again. Um, it's in the right order, you'll notice now, but your algorithm needs to go through one more check. So it will be 10, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one and it's gone through a whole pass without any swaps, so it's in descending order. And we only needed uh, five passes for that one. We did not need a six pass like we needed in example one. Okay, let's do another example, example three. We're gonna use the bubble sort to put these in alphabetical order. So you want them going from A to Z, obviously. Okay, so you want the small, uh, the lower in the alphabet going first. So 
E and H, E has to go first. Think of H there. Compare H and G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, G must go first. Think of H there. H and A, well, A must go first. H and R, well, H must go first. It's in the right place. R and T, well, that's in the right place. T and Y, they're in the right place. And the Y has gone to the back. Okay, let's go again. E and G are right. G and A, well, no, A must go before G. G and H, well, they're in the right place. H and R, again, in the right place. Uh, R and T, we knew that, and Y was in the right place. Okay, and now we're going to go uh, through it again. E and A need swapping. If E was here, that was in the right place with regards to G. And all the others are in the right place here. And lastly, it goes through one pass and it realizes it didn't need to make any swaps at all. So the bubble sort algorithm knows that now it's in alphabetical order and we're done. Okay, at this stage, I'm gonna put some questions up for you. I'd like you to pause the video, have a go at these, okay, on, the, some, on your book or on some pieces of paper, and then I'm just gonna put the answers up. I'm not gonna go through them, I'm just gonna put the answers up, and I expect you to mark your work and make corrections if necessary. So here are the questions, okay. In 10 seconds, I'll put the answers up for you. So pause the video, have a go yourself. And the answer to question one was as follows, okay? It took me four passes and that's what I got. The answer to question two, as follows. So pause and mark your work. It took me three passes. And the answer to question three was as follows. And it took me three passes again. So please mark your work there. Okay, just to finish with, some homework and further study. Um, use the Decision 1 Edexcel book, okay, and I'd expect you to read chapter 1, page 10 and 11, which covers the bubble sort algorithm. And just double check, you understand examples 7, 8 and 9. They're quite quick examples. Then what I'd like you to do is exercise 1C, question 1A and B, and that's going to be on page 13. So that's on page 13. The last thing I'd want you to do is to go to the past paper questions 2 video um, where I work through the past paper questions that have come up on Bubblesaw. So you're looking for this on my YouTube channel, uh, this video here, the past paper questions to the bubble sort algorithm questions, and I go through the past paper questions that have come up on Bubblesaw. So you can print out the questions, have a go, um, and mark your work against mine. So going back to homework, homework, consolidate page 10 and 11, and do exercise 1C question 1A and B, and work through the past paper questions on bubble sort. I hope you found that useful in your revision and your work on decision one mathematics. Thank you for watching.